to get settled in and signed on. So we'll kick off in a couple of minutes. And for those of you just coming on now, we're just waiting a few minutes till everybody signs in and gets settled in. So we'll kick off in a few. We're very, very excited to see everyone. Afternoon, everybody. For those of you just signing on right now, and sorry for those of you who have already heard this message many times, but for those of you just signing on, we're going to kick off in a couple of minutes. I'm going to wait till everybody gets settled in and um, signed on. We still have people logging in now, so we'll give it another minute or so. <clears throat> Let's see how we're doing up. There's still people coming on. All right, so we'll get going soon. Thanks for waiting. But there are a bunch of people still logging on. So we'll wait till everybody's logged in and we'll get going really shortly. Let's see what time it is, 12.17. Let me look at the list. All right, I think we'll kick off right now. Looks like we have a good um, number of people ready to go. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the LGO Application Tips Q&A session. This webinar is being recorded, just so you know, so it'll be online in a couple of days so you can access. If you do ever want to have a recording, um, let us know. So today we're going to talk about the application tips. Um, the format will be this. I have a few slides to go over, which I will go over. And then at the end, we'll have a session. We'll have a time for Q&A. For questions, because this is being recorded and it's in webinar format, if I could ask everyone to add your questions to the Q&A box, that way our team here can monitor and answer your questions as they go. Uh, I'm going to go through quick... Introductions before we start. My name is Dominic Lomano. I am the Director of Admissions and Marketing for the LGO program. We have with us today Emma and Jacob. Emma, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Emma, and I am the Admissions and Marketing Coordinator for LGO. Jacob, I know you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jacob Gerbino. I'm a uh, LGO class of 2025, so currently in my first year, also uh, doing uh, mechanical engineering. Great. Thank you, Jacob. Okay, so let's get going. We're going to talk about q and I mean, admissions tips for the LGO application. So really quick, I know at this point, most of you probably have already done your research and now are applying, hopefully. But um, just to do a quick introduction, the LGO program is a two-year dual degree program. You will become a full student of the MIT Sloan MBA program. You'll become a full student of the engineering department that you um, choose to be get your master's in. And also you become part of the LGO program. Uh, we have our own LGO staff for student services, for career network, uh, for financing, for and for action learning. So you will be part of the MIT community as a whole. You'll be part of your own LGO community. And then you'll also be part of the engineering and business communities as well. So because it's two degrees, we do a 24-month program, two calendar years as opposed to two academic years. You will be taking advantage of your summer semesters. Um, and depending on where things lay out in your planning, your winter semesters as well. Um, it's on campus for the most part. The one thing that isn't going to be on campus is the internship. So we guarantee a six-month internship. We have 20 partner companies um, that we have that uh, give us internships. 
And a quick note on the internships, they're um, really quite amazing. They're, I always make the joke, you're not going to be making copies and you're not going to be fetching coffee for everyone. These are applied internships that the partner companies that we partner with have an opportunity they'd like to um, look into. Maybe there's an issue that they want to try to correct, but these are hands-on, roll-up-your-sleeves internships. Um what else can I talk about here? Um, oh, you also have to do a thesis. Um, thesis research is conducting during your internship. You'll get two faculty advisors assigned, one from the School of Engineering and also one from the School of Management. And that's in addition to your program advisors here on the LGO team. Moving on, let me quickly get into the numbers now. So we enroll a smaller class size of about 50 students, which is great because the small community uh, promotes really close bonds with your classmates. You also get to um, get really close with your Sloan and engineering teams as well. We have about 1,500 alumni all over the world, and that obviously continues to grow. Um, you'll be part of a large global network. And every year you can tap into the 400 MBAs that graduate through Sloan as well. Um, each engineering department operates a little differently and they vary in size, but they're also you're also encouraged to integrate into your engineering department's community as well. On average, so let's take a look at the numbers. On average, our class uh, usually has about five years of work experience. However, the range is usually around from two to 10. I would say you would need at least three years um, as a minimum to really get into that that um, good section, but five is the average. Um, LGO is ideal for candidates with a STEM background. Uh, those candidates are also ready to lead strategic innovation in a variety, in a variety of in, uh, industries. Students come from a range of experience, including aviation, operations, consulting, pharma, biotech, um, there's manufacturing, there's en energy, there's automotive, there's also defense, so lots of different industries that you um, our students come from. And also after our graduates go on to pursue many varieties of functions within a broad range of industries and ventures, including entrepreneurship, um, which is an indication of the versatility of the degree that you get. Okay, so 3.7 also on the GPA for numbers. Like I mentioned, five years of experience and about 50 students. All right, let's move on. This is a quick list of some of our partner companies. Now, again, I just want to highlight the partner companies. They're really amazing for a number of reasons. Number one, as I mentioned, they supply a lot of uh, all of the internships, which is great. Uh, what is another great benefit is they help fund the program. And that makes it possible to actually provide about 60% tuition coverage to all of the admitted students. So that's right off the bat, you'll get 60%. It's about 50 to 60% of your tuition waived. We also have a number of fellowships and other scholarships that we do award. Uh, but even before that, because of the funding through the partner companies, you get about 60, uh, like I said, 50 to 60% coverage. Um, I also mentioned they will provide the guaranteed research um, internships. And another great unstated uh, benefit of these partner companies is you get to network and you get to work with them so much that a lot of the LGOs actually will go on to work at a lot of these partner companies after they graduate from the program. So great, great partnership we have, great program we have with our partner companies. All right, let's talk about admissions now. <clears throat> That's why we're here. So there's not, we look at kind of the entire application holistically. There's not really one piece of the application that will make or break your chance, chances of admission. Um, you'll only have to submit one application and you'll get reviewed. That one application will be reviewed by all three teams, the Sloan MBA team, the engineering team, and also the LGO team. Um, during the review process, we're looking to score you on a number of different competencies, Qualities like how well you work on a team, how you solve scientific problems, how you perform in advanced STEM coursework, things like how you communicate change and get buy-in from those around you. So we look at a lot of different things. It's not, like I said, just one thing. It's not just about your GPA and your, and your standardized test scores. So let's look at some of these, the main, well, actually, let me rewind. 
the 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 high level buckets that we have are academic, professional, and personal qualities. Let's break those down real quick. So academic performance, that's largely your transcript and your academic record, your standardized test scores, and more specifically your quant proficiency, both on standardized tests and in your transcripts and your undergrad courses. Um, the transcripts are looked closely by both Sloan and the engineering department. We're looking at your overall GPA. We're looking at the courses that you've completed. We're looking at any trends and grades over your academic terms. The engineering team in particular is interested in any STEM courses you've completed. Um, and so you don't necessarily need to have all of your, for example, Aero Astro classes um, to be considered for Aero Astro, but they want to make sure you have those STEM courses to get an idea that you have your base down. So it's important to have good STEM courses in your transcript. What else can I talk about? Oh, so GMAT and GRE for your standardized tests, one or the other. Um, and again, we will obviously look at the um, quant and the quant proficiency, both in your standardized tests and your academic record. Let's move on. Professional accomplishments, your career, your career progress. Um, we'll look at your resume. We'll look at the cover letter. We'll look at the letters of recommendation. Um, the org chart also we have, uh, and I'll, uh, I have a slide that will list all of the individual pieces in a second, but the org chart, um, which we also include, will be a good part of this. Um, I want to quickly break down letters of rec because that we do get a lot of questions about that. <clears throat> so two letters of rec is required, um, one from a technical source and one from more of an academic or professional source. We also recommend submitting a third optional technical recommendation. Uh, and, you know, where you get those from can can vary from candidate to candidate. It depends on your background. It depends on where you're coming from. Um, Jacob, I want to actually put you on the spot real quick and talk about recommendations. Can you think back to when you were applying and put on your admissions hat? What were you thinking about when you were looking at your recommendations and how you were going to approach that? And who are you going to ask? Yeah, so um, so my, my background, I I. I uh majored in undergrad in control systems engineering, so a STEM degree, but then I uh, went into the Marine Corps and flew for 11 years. So um, although it was pretty involved, it wasn't technically rigorous. Uh, so um, that kind of, especially when it came to the technical uh, letter of recommendation, uh, kind of asked around to other, other LGO members. And um, one thing that's really important is it's that technical letter of recommendation is gonna be, it's really largely for the School of Engineering to, so that they're convinced that you can that you you can handle the um, the academic load and like the technical rigor of a of a, of a one of their uh, Mechie degrees. So the guidance I was given at the time was it really needs to be either a like a PhD that you work with in academia or a you know like a, a licensed engineer who you worked under who can like vouch that you you have done technical work. Um, so in my case, I had to reach back to a, a professor that I uh, worked with my senior design project on. So it'd been 10 years, but I, you know, I emailed him a copy of my resume. And then like, I still had the, the write-up for my final report, um, just to kind of jog his memory. And I asked him for a letter of recommendation. Um, and he was completely, completely open to it. Uh, wrote me a letter of recommendation. And, and most people I've talked to uh, didn't have any issues with that. Like, I think, I think a lot of professors know that a decade down the line or more, they may get a request for a letter of recommendation. It's pretty pretty normal in the academic field. Um, the other one was just somebody who, uh, yeah, the other letter of recommendation is somebody who can speak to your, you know, leadership ability, personality, stuff like, you know, the normal letter of recommendation stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be your current boss because they may or may not know whether whether you're looking to resign or and go to grad school, but somebody, uh, you know, rel somebody who can kind of, you, you who can vouch uh, that you are, you know, professional, hardworking, and, uh, um, and and intelligent. Hmm. Thanks, Jacob. Those are some good insights. Um, okay, so let's move on from professional. The last kind of main box we look at, personal qualities. <clears throat> so personal qualities. We want to look at attributes that indicate what kind of candidate you are. Um, these potential attributes are highlighted in things like your statement of purpose, your 60-second video statement, 
And we also interview, we don't interview everybody, but we interview all the applicants that will eventually get admitted. So if you're going down the right path, you'll get an invite for interview. Now that's not a guarantee that you're going to get into the program. Um, we we will inter we will invite to interview more than we will admit. But um, if you're going down that path, we will definitely bring you in for an interview. Um, video statement, 60 seconds. You just really um, record yourself as an intro. And we want you to be creative. We want you to think about, you know, where you uh, record that, how you record it. Jacob, let me put you on the spot again. Can you tell us the story on your video statement? How, what, why, what were you thinking? Um, so like the way, the way the video statement is, is uh, really it's another chance to kind of show something about you. So um, whether that's, so you should really, really think about, you know, what the backdrop is or what you have in the frame or something like that, that kind of shows who you are. Um, I, I was, I was uh, with an aviation unit at the time. So I, I, I set up my, I had my wife hold my, our phone in front of, and I was standing in front of a, uh, of an aircraft uh, with the, with the, you know, so the, the plane was in the background, but uh, not saying you have to do something like that, just something to show who you are. Uh, and I would also just make sure the other thing is make sure that you, they can, they can see and hear you. So like just take pay attention to lighting and background noise um, since there's really, they're pretty strict on what kind of post-processing you can do. Um, so it really just make sure that you've got uh Wherever you do it, whether it's in your living room or at work or something like that, make sure that the lighting is good so they can see you and that uh, there's no issues hearing hearing you clearly. Yeah, and that's a great point, Jacob. In fact, we purposely say we don't want you to edit because we want to see you. This is where you can shine. Um, we've had all kinds of great video statements in the past. We've had students on their bikes driving through town. We've had um, all kinds of great things. But this is where you can kind of say, this is me. Um, and so we always love to get the video statements that are one of our favorite parts of the um, uh, application to go over. Statement of purpose, too. I wanted to mention that it's a um, shorter essay, about 300 words. This is where you can talk about your engineering side. Um, we want to understand why you want to enroll in the engineering department that you chose. Um, we want to talk about your career goals, your academic past and how that all fits into where you want to go. And particularly in that engineering field that you choose. So that's another great way that we can kind of get a um, side of your personal qualities. So again, in in to recap, the, the main three buckets that we're looking at in terms of the application, academic, professional, and personal qualities. Okay, let's take a look at the actual application now. We've gone over most of this already, but just to recap, <clears throat> it's online. So obviously you can go in and out. You don't have to submit all at once. You can go in and work on it um, and then log out, log back in, work on it a week later. Resume, cover letter, two letters of rec that we mentioned, three, the third technical is strongly encouraged, a statement of purpose, the video statement, and then the org chart. Quick note about the org chart. Um, we wanna see really where you are in your company or your situation sometimes um, we'll see the um, anyone coming from the military. They'll they'll show um, their their where they are in the uh, the military position. If they're you know a sergeant or whatever, we also want to see if you're who you're getting your recommendations from. If they happen to be on that org chart, do highlight them so we know again where you are in the org, where your recommenders are. Let me think. What else can we talk about from the application? It's a pretty straightforward application. Um, there's nothing too um, out of the ordinary. Once you get going, you'll be able to get a good chunk of it done um, in that first session. But if you do need time to work on it again, like I said, you don't have to finish everything all at once. We do have an early admit program I want to talk about real quick. So we have an MBA early admit and we have an LGO early admit program. So real quickly, just so you know, um, LGO early admit, you have to be a MIT undergrad student. But if you happen to be, if any of you happen to be um, MIT undergrads, you can apply to LGO early. You will then um, submit your application right now. And if we say yes, and you're admitted, you will then go to work for hopefully three years. We'll keep in touch with you. And when you come back, you have to update a few things 
on your resume um, and update if you probably update a recommendation. And when you're ready to enroll, you'll have a spot that you can come back in. Same thing with the MBA. Um, the MBA early program is open to all undergrad applicants. They don't have to be an MIT undergrad. Um, you know, you'll just have to say when you do come back, if you do the MBA early admit route, when you come back, you would just make the option for LGO. But if you, any of you are undergrads, we do have early admit program. Um, if you happen to be interested in that, reach out to us and we'll let you know the best way to go. If it's MBA early or LGO early, they're essentially the same thing, but there's a little bit of a different path for each. Moving on. Deadline, November 8th. So last year we had two deadlines. We're making it one deadline this year. Um, it's just easier on you, the applicants. It's easier on us, the staff. It's also easier on the reviewers. So November 8th is the deadline. You have to have everything in by then, including your recommenders um, replies. If you have to order your transcript, that has to be all ready. So make sure your plan November 8th is everything in, including the things that are sort of out of your control. So once you request your recommended recommender to fill out the recommendation, you got to make sure they get it in by November 8th. Decisions will be mailed out March 1st. If you happen to be in, uh, invited for an interview, that will happen around probably late to, mid to late December or early January. We're doing most of our interviews during the month of January. Um, and yeah, we will not look at anything until after the deadline. So everything has to be done and finished in the deadline. That's when we will start reviewing all the applications. And again, we'll send out decisions by March 1st. Okay, that is all I have. Questions. You have student here, you have staff here. What kind of questions do you have? Let's monitor the chat. So there's some open ones here that I will go over. So I'm just typing that one. Um, Oh, we're going to do this one live, Emma. I got it. Uh, the website suggests two letters of recommendation with one preferably being from the current boss and one from an academic advisor. Where does the third recommender fit into this? And as we mentioned, it's best on your third to get a um, technical one. Like Jacob was talking about, you want to take a look at your technical side. So that is where I think you should go in terms of your third recommendation. Let's see what else we have here. These are all great questions. For those who are looking to matriculate for fall 2025, would the timeline be similar to 2024, Zell? And yes, we don't know the exact date yet, um, but that is usually where it's going to be, early to mid-November. I will. Can I answer one? Yeah, please do. Um, so I saw the question similar to the view on applicants. What are the most common professional roles to LGO graduates? that LGO graduates take on after graduating. Some examples, again, it can differ by everyone, what they want to do after graduating from LGO, but some examples have been supply chain and logistics manager, business operations manager, COO founder. Um, but 80% of recent graduates found jobs through LGO Sloan Resources, just for your information. Thank you, Emma. We have another question. Um, the question was, do I understand correctly that the MIT LGO program is not really ideal for a fresh undergrad with very limited work experience? That's a correct statement. And I'll tell you why. We value professional experience. Um, the classes are very interactive. And so the students bring that experience with them to the classroom, to the projects you're doing, uh, to the internship. So it's really important to have some experience um, to bring into the program. Jacob, do you want to, again, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you want to talk about that at all? Your ex previous experiences and how it helps you in the classroom? Um, oh, like how, how, like, uh, my work experience helped me in the classroom. Yeah. Um, I mean, I came, like, like I said, it was in a non-technical, so it necessarily, um, it didn't necessarily help a whole lot, but I, I, I think, um, yeah, it, it was like, well, most of what I studied was like was not necessarily like one hundred percent applicable to what was in the classroom. That's also not necessarily like a detractor. Um, I don't think like I think like uh, I I don't I think some of the questions are kind of assuming that LGO is looking for like you know one type of person, and that's that's not really the case. Um, I think there's some desires, which is you know somebody who is 
uh, you know, work experience and um, especially a little bit, uh, I think, uh, a little, hopefully a little bit of a technical background. But uh, beyond that, it's it's not really um, prescriptive on like, this is this one type of person we're looking in everything, you know, it's not like everything you, you've done in the past doesn't have to be leading up to this one point. Great points. Emma, did you want to grab that one about the MBA being admitted? Yeah. So a special thing about the LGO application is that if you happen to not get into LGO, um, you are then put in the round two pool for MBA and then are like reviewed through MBA as well. So we require you to only spit one application through LGO. And then, yes, if not, then you'll move into round two with the MBA. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Again, these are great questions. Thank you for typing in all the um, questions. Would having an MS and two years of work experience compensate for the less work experience? It's hard to tell. That's not really a yes or no answer. Um, it depends. Depends on your work. It depends on your transcript. It depends on a lot of things. Ideally, um, it'd be good to... So our email is lgo at mit.edu. In these cases where you're looking for specific advice, send us an email. Um, send us an email with your resume. And if you happen to have a copy of your transcript, and we have a team of um, advisors with us that can actually look at that and advise. It's tough to say, you know, I would just say that you are going up against an average of five years of work experience. The other applicants will have that average. So it will be tougher for sure if you only have two. Um, but again, it's a case by case thing. If you send us an email, we can really get into the specifics with you. Another question, should the cover letter focus more on problem solving skills or leadership skills? Um, again, not really a straight answer there. I kind of think both, um, Jacob, I'm putting you on the spot again. Tell me, tell us about the cover letter, how you approached it. Um, without giving you any personal details of what kind of you said on your cover letter, your process there. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I, I would take a look at really kind of the cover letter along with the statement of purpose, uh, since you really only get, what is it? One's 250 words and one's 300 words. So it's, they're very short. So I think you want to eliminate, um, a lot of the redundancy. So I, you know, I, I think you should try not to cover both in, in uh, both topics in both sections. So um, I think, you know, the audience for that one is, uh, is, is the, is the uh, LGO director. So I, I think, I think either is good as long as it's done well. Um, so you can talk about, you know, a certain time where like, you know, uh, you, you had to solve a problem or like, you know, this is my general, I, I did more about, this is my general background. I led teams from diverse uh, backgrounds and this is why it is helpful. I would, it would, it would help me be successful at LGO. Great. Thank you, Jacob. Okay. Still going here. Great questions again. Um, Emma, you're grabbing that one about the quant. Um, I think that's important. I'm just going to repeat it. Um, the question was, I have a 63 quant, but 154 verbal. Is there a verbal cutoff? So no, technically, no, there's no verbal cutoff. However, um, you know, we take a look at everything. Again, we'll look at everything. We'll, we'll um, look at your resume. We'll, if you happen, we'll take a look at your video statement. So there's a number of things we can look at. Um, but technically, no, there's not a verbal um, cutoff. Um, I can, I can oh, yeah, go ahead, from, like, uh, about, uh, I can take this one right here on the top. Uh, can you elaborate on how LGO prepares you to lead technical teams? Um, so on that, so there's the normal MBA classes that you'll take, uh, which do have a, like a, you know, a decent amount of rigor, uh, compared to some other programs, I believe just be, being MIT in general. But, um, on top of that, uh, the first summer, you're going to take some, some classes that are going to really deal with like, you know, probability, uh, statistics, some, some, some pretty high level optimization. Um, that's going to be a lot more than what an MBA, normal MBA would get. And, and then you also have your, uh, you're going to take, you're going to take your engineering classes and those are, uh, kind of, 
fair. There's there's a wide range of what you can take. Um, but the big thing is there's going to be, you're going to have a lot more technical rigor um, associated with the, uh, the your, your, your engineering degree that's going to kind of help you lead technical teams. Um, but you're also going to have classes on uh, that go pretty in depth on operations management, uh, operations uh, management. You know, there's opportunities to take supply chain management. So it's really, there, there are some opportunities to go really in the weeds and get very technical. Great job, Jacob. Love it. Um, I know you want to grab a couple, Emma. Let me just do one really quick. Unlike many other schools, MIT's MBA application does not include sections about involvement in organizations outside of work or school. Is it still helpful to talk about those sorts of experiences in your resume and written statements if they show some sort of your leadership abilities, or is it a higher value, is a higher value placed on professional experiences? So great question. I think all of it is important and you should definitely talk about those. Again, we take a look at the whole picture. It's not just about professional and technical. We want to see who you are. We want to see if you're a good cultural fit. So I would definitely talk about that. Um, take advantage of the statement of purpose. Take advantage of the cover letter. Take advantage of the video statement for sure. Um, definitely, yes. Go ahead, Emma. Perfect. Um, so one of the questions is, what would you say are some of the common pitfalls or, or mistakes people make in applying to the LDO program? I would say, I don't know if this is like a typical mistake, but make sure you're doing your research about the LGO program. Make sure you know like what engineering department you want to apply to, know about our partner companies. Um, and like that needs to be shown within your application to make sure you're like, you know what you're talking about, essentially, especially like when in the statement of purpose, we want to know like what companies you possibly want to intern with, or um, maybe you talk about a specific um, professor within the engineering department you want to apply to. We want to make sure you've done your research um, and that you're really passionate about the LGO program. Um, another question is what departments do students commonly do internships in? Um, students do our um, internships with our partner companies. They don't do it within like a specific engineering department with the professor. Um, they do have faculty advisors within Sloan and the engineering department, but you do your internships with one of the partner companies and it does, you know, base off of like, okay, maybe Nike only wants Mackey students this time around. So it does change. Jacob, are you doing anything for Feb start? Or are you going to wait till June? I'm going to wait till June. All right, perfect. I was just going to say if you're not, but we there are two start days for um, internships. So there are interviews starting now for February and the other one is in January. Sorry, not January, in June. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Um, a quick note on time. I technically we're going a little past our time, but that's okay. I have we have a, still have a bunch of questions that we're gonna get through all of them. But I just want to be cognizant of everybody's calendar. If you do have to hop off, please do. Um, but just know if you have any, if anyone does have to hop off, lgo at mit.edu is our email. Email us. Stay in touch. Ask us questions. We're here for you. Um, okay, let's continue with all these amazing questions. Um, oh yeah, here's a good one. Um, Jacob, I'm going to call on you on this one too. Regarding class balance, is there an emphasis on pulling students from multiple fields and experiences? What about international experience? Yeah, I think so. I think, and Jacob, back me up on this one. I think, you know, what we want to do as admissions is get a pretty diverse class in terms of experience and where you come from. I think that that kind of diversity is great for the class. Um, but Jacob, any thoughts on that? Yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely I think there's a few questions kind of along that same line. Uh, there's definitely a, a lot of diverse backgrounds. So um, you've got and not everybody has intensive uh, engineering backgrounds. So you, you do get some people that come from you know, consulting or you get some people that come from like, you know, working at you know, product development at Google or somewhere in Silicon Valley types. Um, and we also have a few that work at, like, came from you know, aerospace firms doing, doing like, uh, the, you know, engine design or airframe design, but that's not all. I mean, some, like there's a few that are in the military that do a wide variety of things. Um, certainly a decent amount of like management consulting backgrounds, uh, just to name a few. I mean, but like, so there's, there's kind of, as long as you can show an aptitude for like, uh, you know, for your, for the, for learning and, uh, 
as well as like a, a desire to continue the learning. Um, there's just a wide, wide background, uh, range of backgrounds that people come from. I agree. I totally agree. <clears throat> um, couple more to go. Is there any preference from LG on GMAT versus GRE? No. Um, they're both, you know, your standardized kind of tests. So no. Jacob's typing the last answer there. Oh yeah, this is what we were just kind of talking about. Um, consulting was listed as one of the professional backgrounds most common. Does this imply that it's common or okay for LGO students to not have extensive applied engineering work experience, but maybe more of a studied undergrad background? Um, Jacob, do you want to just also kind of say, you can't see the typed answers. Do you want to give your answer? Yeah, that, that one just would just be, uh, again, like, so no strict requirement for, uh, so like pr preference for a STEM undergrad, but since then no strict requirement for extensive, uh, uh, extensive under, uh, you know, applied, applied engineering in the meantime, but uh, definitely be, be able to show an aptitude and a desire for, um, for kind of learning that area. You want to make sure you have a good background, a good foundation. You don't have to be specifically, um, you know, like you mentioned, very applied. We want to just make sure you have a foundation to kind of um, understand that in the future and, and, and continue to learn about that in the future. Um, let's see what we have here. Emma, you want to answer that one live real quick? Yeah, were... so um, the question is, how do scholarships work for the LGO program? Um, and with the generous support of our partner companies and alumni, the LGO program awards over 5 million in fellowships and scholarships to each incoming class. Um, the student's award varies based on previous academic and professional performance, enthusiasm for the LGO program, um, an interest in engineering, high-tech management, operations, and manufacturing. But on average, an LGO student not sponsored by a company will receive a fellowship award that covers 55% of their total tuition, and the fellowship is distributed throughout the two-year program and is applied toward the program's tuition cost or as a stipend. Um, and the LGO communicates your whole time total financial package together with that acceptance letter. So you will get that when you are accepted. And you don't have to do anything extra. As long as you apply, we'll use that as part of your um, application for uh, additional fellowships and scholarships. Okay, let's see what else we have. Uh, for the video statement, what have been the most creative, crazy submissions? Um, Trying to think off the top of my head. I, I saw one from last year that was in front of um, an ice cream shop. And I thought that one was super creative. Um, but a lot of people have done it on their bikes or yeah. in, it's really up to you, based, basically what you want to do. You can go as crazy or not crazy as you want. Yeah, this is really the one window we have to, for you to be you. Um, and we kind of want to see, we don't... I know this is, I don't want this to sound like a cop-out answer, but we kind of don't want to give you any advice here. We want you to do you here. We want to see what your creative choices are. So um, just try to, it's the, honestly, it, there's, you don't have to worry about it too much. We just want to get a good um, clip of see who you are. My personal one that I liked a lot um, was, was a quick kind of day in the life. They, it, it was pretty cool. They took a little bit of their morning, um, took a little bit of the afternoon, took a little bit of their night um, and, and put it into a 60 second thing. I thought it was neat. But again, don't stress too much about that. You just do you. And again, I don't want it to sound like a cop out, but it's that's we did that on purpose. OK, let's see what else. Uh, more great questions coming in. I love that. Um, Emma, you're getting that. You want to do that one you want to do live? Yes. Um. So. We don't have, I guess, like a cutoff for the GRE or GMAT, but I'll, I'll look at the class of 2025 and tell you what the average for the GRE and GMAT is. Um, so the class of 2025, the average GRE was between 160 and 168, which is the Plant score. And then for GMAT, the uh, like the range was between 690 to 770. So again, we look at the different parts. So. Don't worry if maybe you didn't do as well as you wanted to on the GMAT or GRE, but we do look at the whole application. Um, another question coming in. So the additional fellowships and scholarships, um, what criteria does LGO use to award those? Again, I'm sorry to say it depends, but it really, it depends. There's a number of different fellowships and scholarships that Emma mentioned. Um, and so we really, there's really not one specific answer there. Um, I would say I would suggest kind of going on the website and looking at all the different additional fellowships and scholarships 
and seeing what the qualifications are. Um, but it really could depend on a lot of number of things. All right, let's see what else we got. Do you share low end of GPA admitted? Um, I don't even know if I have it up the top of my head. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that one, Mario. Um, I don't know the answer quite yet. I don't even know if what it is. Uh, so I'll get back to you on that one, the, the low end of the GPA. I do know, honestly, just to from just reviewing and looking at the GPA, it, um, it's pretty competitive. So I think um, if you do have a lower GPA, we'd want to talk about that in the statement of purpose, uh, maybe the cover letter, but it is really competitive. Um, so just keep that in mind. What else? Oh, I did that one. Oh, we're all caught up. That's great. <laughs> um, here's another one. Does the extra fellowship award at the end at when the candidate is selected or later during the first or second year? It's when the candidate is selected, Jordan. So you will get everything that you want. The admit package will have everything. It'll have, if you're admitted, it'll have the 50 to 60%, whatever it works out to this cycle from the partner company funding. And then if you are awarded any additional scholarships or fellowships, it will be part of your admit package. Are the internships and in LGO paid? What other funding avenues are available? So they're not paid. Um, the reason is because the partner companies um, really give you that 50 to 60% tuition reimbursement. Um, and so we do not pay on the internships. What other funding avenues are available? So the fellowships and scholarships. So outside of the half tuition that you'll get immediately waived, there are the fellowships and scholarships that we've talked about already. And then otherwise for other funding, there are um, OGE fellowships, which is the Office of Graduate Education. Um, these are MIT wide awards and each MIT department nominates one person for each awards and it's highly competitive. And there's also TA appointments, about one third of LGO students choose to pursue a TA, but again, that's up to you and you'll have to do that on your own, essentially. Um, and then one other question I saw was Sloan has an optional essay in the application. Is that applicable to LGO as well? Yep, we do also do have that in our application. And you, for recommendation, if you feel like you wanna answer the question, I don't have the question right off the top of my head, but it's basically how something has formed your life. Um, but if you wanna submit it, feel free to, But we're not going to penalize you if you don't want to. Um, you mentioned we can send our CV for review to evaluate a good fit the problem. Not sure if I understood right, but could you elaborate on how to, Oh, just send an email. LGO at MIT.edu. That's our main email inbox. Um, and you can send your resume and just ask, you know, you're thinking about this pro this department, want to just check it out. Um, but just send us an email and we will, we have advisors that will look into that and advise. I do see how many rounds for the application mission deadline. We only have one round and it's due on November 8th. Um, and then the other question, how many international students will be considered to admit to the 2026? There's no cutoff or like a quota we have to fill. Um, it's just, we look at the applicants and see who's the best. So it depends on the year. <laughs> All right, I think we're caught up right now. We'll wait another minute. Um, I know we are coming up on one o'clock now. Let's give it another sec. Um, okay, that was great. Those were really great questions. Oh, one more, hold on. Is there a seat limit for each engineering branch? Um, again, it depends. Yeah, so it depends. Each engineering department has its own requirements. Um, so it, uh, depending on the year, depending on the department that could vary. Um, if you go on our website and go under class profile, you can see how many were admitted to each department last year. So that can yeah. kind of give you a little bit of a basis. Um, it doesn't normally vary too much in between. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So it could depend. <clears throat> Um, oh, Emma, you got that one. 
No other questions? Oh, thank you, Jenny. You got it. Any way we can help. Okay, everybody. That was great. Great questions. Stay in touch. LGO at MIT.edu. Email us if you have any questions. If you want us to talk to any current students like the amazing Jacob, um, we're here for you. We can help you out. Let us know. Stay in touch. We look forward to reviewing your application. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much, Jacob, for helping out. That was really amazing. Have a great rest of your week, everybody, and have a great weekend. Thanks a bunch.